thrill me. This show is part of the Thrill Me Podcast Network. Experience more on Facebook and YouTube. Episode of the Reveal Rob Show. Appreciate you all joining in for another round of the random twistedness that is this show. I am your host, Reveal Rob, coming at you with all kinds of fun stuff this week. Got some DC and horror talk, as always, mandatory for the show. DC realm will be talking, of course, what uh, James Gunn's been up to, as well as Jason Momoa has been talking about his DC uh, future maybe, uh, as well, going to jump into horror talk, I'm going to be talking franchises like Friday the 13th, Predator, Scream, all that stuff and more, and then of course, we've got your review of, kind of partial review of, that 90s show, the sequel show to that 70s show, man, can't wait to get into that, I said kind of review because I haven't watched the full season yet, I've watched a couple episodes, but I have thoughts, for sure, so, Going to give you all of that and more on this episode of the Reveal Rob Show. Again, as always, appreciate you joining in. Hope you've all had a great um, time since last time we uh, we chatted here, man. It is Royal Rumble Week, baby. So excited about that. That's one of the big four pay-per-views. You know me. I'm a huge WWE fan, and uh, this is one of the big four pay-per-views, like I mentioned just a second ago, uh, that the WWE puts on every year. And not only will the WWE be putting on this big, huge event, but us here at the Throw Me Podcast Network will be putting on a big event of our own. That's right, man. We're going to be putting on an event ourselves this year called the Royal Rumble Game that will be hitting this Saturday, January 28th. Uh, We'll be... Doing uh, an event, a fun time, during the two Rumble matches. You get the women's and the men's Rumble match. I, I did a little hesitation there because we do have an 8 p.m. start time listed. I, I assume the show is going to kick off with one of the Rumble matches. It would only make sense. So, uh, But we will be live on YouTube, so make sure you follow, like, subscribe, and have those notifications um, on. Hit that little, Hit that little belly bell. On there, on the YouTube, man. Make sure you get the notification for all new stuff coming to them from the Throw Me Podcast Network on the YouTube. Got all kinds of stuff going down on there, as well as Zach Speakeasy dropping some new content on there recently. Uh, we'll talk about some more stuff going on on the Throw Me Podcast Network YouTube. But right now, we're talking about the Royal Rumble game. Like I said, you can join in and have some fun with us if you want to join in. You can become a member of our Patreon for just $1 to join in on the fun that will be taking place again on the 28th. On our YouTube, that's the Throw Me Podcast Network's YouTube, man. Royal Rumble game, gonna have some good times and like, dude, check out our Patreon. Um, you may have noticed if you already have subscribed to our YouTube, I posted a video of one of the shows I have coming up, uh, be episode two of the show I do on our Patreon, which is the Spin the Wheel, Stream the Deal. That's a show basically where I spin a wheel, <laughs> um, featuring a bunch of platforms uh, for streaming purposes, and then I spin a second wheel after I land on the platform randomly, and I. Uh, get a genre and I have to pick a movie randomly out of that. So what I do from there is I go to, so let's just say if it's, um, uh, Paramount and horror, then I'm going to go to Paramount streaming service and go to their horror section. I'm going to put right everything down on Excel spreadsheet from there. I'm gonna go to a random number generator on my phone, uh, type in whatever number of horror films that Paramount ends up having hit the random number generator, whatever it lands on will be subsequently the movie that I pick to watch and then review on said Patreon show, man, a lot of work going on on that show, man. So I appreciate you <laughs> joining the Patreon just for the work I put in on that show alone, but we got some other fun stuff going down on our Patreon as well. A lot of good content over there. You got Mr. Wonderful dropping his shows. You've got uh, Zach doing some good stuff over there as well, man. We've got some, we got some great stuff going on on the Patreon that, um, missing out on man so go over there join our patreon we have some good stuff going on we've even got a tier where you know you get some extra goodies man so 
check that out. Be sure to uh, look up the Throwing Podcast Network's Patreon. Like I said, we got some good, fun content going on over there. And then let's go ahead and jump into this week's reveal. That's what you're here for. Uh, that 90s show is what I'll be talking about this week. As you notice, I'm not playing an audio clip because I'm getting hit with a lot of copyright stuff. And I'm trying to get rid of that um, as much as possible. <laughs> you know, um, So... Yes, but that 90s show is what I will be talking about here on this episode, probably next week's episode as well, once I finish watching the first season of the show. Uh, Second season hasn't been announced so far, so we'll see how things go. But uh, yeah, I was uh, excited for this show going into it. Uh, You know, I am, you may or may not know this, I am a huge fan of that 70s show. It's one of my all-time favorite shows, uh, without a doubt, and might be even a top five favorite show. I'm going to have to jump into that and look into that a little bit more, but I was really excited when they announced that 90s show, especially when they announced that um, Deborah, Deborah Joe, and Kurtwood were coming back. That's uh, Kitty and Red. When they were coming back to the show, I'm like, heck yeah, that's cool. And the idea that they're the grandparents now to Eric and Donna's daughter like okay this could work that can be fun they're they're gonna you know she's gonna get into some random shenanigans like eric did and all that stuff and you know it's gonna be kind of like that 70s show it's gonna be that 70s show just set in the 90s i'm like okay cool that's an interesting enough idea now i was a little worried going in of course because of that 80s show not being too good you know (laughs) kind of a disaster from what i remember Uh, i have blocked out a lot of that from my mind but uh yeah i did not like what i saw so (laughs) there's a little bit of worry but again knowing that you've got the Two, two big stars from the show coming back that will be part of the show as well as you're going to have some cameos from the uh, the rest of that 70 show cast for the most part uh it, you know it made the you know excitement there uh, return right and then you know going hit before i even watched the show i was kind of scrolling through social media and i saw people talking about it and they're like uh red and kitty's the only good part of this show the rest of the show feels like a disney plus show or a disney channel original show it's, uh, it's not that good the only good times are when red and kitty are on screen i'm like all right well you know that's not the most positive of uh viewpoints there right uh, i mean which is kind of be expected if you're like myself you're a big fan of the show you're attached to the original character so when they're doing this new um, take on that property, it kind of takes you back. I, I can even think about when Girl Meets World happened. A huge fan of Boy Meets World, right? Grew up, I mean, part of my childhood was Boy Meets World. I grew up with Boy Meets World. Um, so when they announced Girl Meets World, I was excited about it, but also like, okay, what are we going to do here? What's going to happen? How is this going to work out? And then you watch the show. It was always very cool to see our our characters from the Boy Meets World time, but, you know, you were more focused on the newer characters, uh, which is, you know, kind of takes you out of it, but at the same time pulls you in um, if you give it enough time and stuff. So that was kind of the, the thought process going in when I saw those thoughts. I'm like, oh, man, so the only good parts of the show are the the originals. Okay, that's, that's what people are saying. Let's, you know, get my own opinion because I don't, you know, just... I make my own decisions when it comes to watching things. Um, so I, I joined, I watched the first episode and I, I, like I said, it was great right away to see red and kitty back on screen. Fantastic to see them back on screen. Um, and some other legacy characters showing up there and it was great. He's got good nostalgia. And then you meet your new cast. Right. And I, I, you know, I was watching it with my brother, tombstone, Josh, check his show out on throwing podcast network, the metal groove podcast. Um, I was watching, I was watching it with him, and he said it as well. Um, that it's like, oh, they're kind of acting like a Disney show. I'm like, okay, you know, and I, you can kind of see it, I guess, uh, to a degree. Maybe I would say leaning more towards Nickelodeon, because Nickelodeon was always more the the edgier of the the two networks, because you know, obviously Disney's not going to get too edgy. Um, so I would lean that way, but I, I could kind of get the vibe and see that for you know at least the first episode. But as we got into uh, more of the show. I was like, I was getting into it. I was like, okay, cool. I'm, I'm getting used to our new kids here. Like, I'm getting used to them. I'm getting used to the feel of the show. I'm getting used to the vibe of the show. Yes, it is that 70s show-ish. But, you know, with, you know, new characters playing our, you know, characters this time around. But, you know, I will say every time a legacy character showed up, I did pop. Like, I loved it. I absolutely loved it. And it felt great. It felt like, it felt really good, you know, to see them again back on the screen. Uh, but I will say, like like I just mentioned a couple of seconds ago, the more time I spend with the show, the more I'm getting used to our new cast. And that's not to say, like, they're bad or anything. It's just, you know, again, the familiarity you have with that 70s show going into that 90s show and you're, you're realizing these are new characters and all that. Like, I can only imagine, 
you know, there's probably people out there who've never seen that 70s show that are just watching the show now because it's trending on Netflix or something like that. Like, okay, cool, I'll check it out. You know, they have no idea about what that 70s show, and it's probably very easy for them to watch and enjoy. For me, going into it, you know, like I said, I, you know, I'm so connected with that 70s show that, you know, part of me is like, okay, what are we getting here with this new cast? But as it goes on and on, I'm like, I'm enjoying this. Like, I'm really enjoying the show. I watched, like I said, a couple episodes with my brother. Then I, you know, when I got home, I watched some more episodes. And I'm like, really enjoying it, man. I think I think they're doing a good job, and it's getting better and better. I can't wait to see how the rest of the shows go. But, you know, it's just that you got to get used to thing, right? Um, where, you know, I keep hashing on it, you know. It, it's, you know, it's like, it's trying to describe it in a way. It's like when it's something that's like you're so connected to and used to, it's getting played with with somebody else, somebody else is creating things and throwing their ideas into it. And you're just like, okay, cool, but let me catch up. You know, let me, let me get on the same vibe, vibe links with you. But I'm enjoying it. Like, I think this show is getting, getting good. And you gotta remember, this is like, yeah, treat this like it's a brand new thing, you know, um, well, not fully new, and I don't mean like fully new, treat it like a brand new thing, but you gotta, you gotta get used to it, because it's a new, a new vibe than what we had before, that 70s show, and again, that 70s show ran for a long time, we got really used to that show, you know, so now that they're doing this new take, this new feel on it, you've gotta get, you know, readjusted and ready and set up for this show, because, you know, again, you're so used to one thing that you're trying, you're, you're thinking way too much about the original thing as opposed to giving the show, I think, the fair shake that it deserves. I'm glad it's on Netflix. I hope it does get another season because, you know, again, this is the first season kinks you got to work out. Every single show in the history of shows has a first season kink that it has to work out. <laughs> you know, it, it, you know, all of them are there. If they'll get to it. They'll get through it. But I'm personally having a great time with the show as it went on. You know, again, a little rusty at the beginning. But, you know, that's just because you had to get used to it. I'm sure I can go back and watch those first episodes. I probably will. So, again, like I said, I am enjoying the show. I probably will give the season another uh, run. Um, after after I'm done with the season, though, I was going to do this before I started watching the season. But I'm like, fuck, that 70s show has a lot of seasons. <laughs> you know, I was going to watch that 70s show first and then jump into this show because, again, this is a sequel to that that show or a continuation to that show. But, uh, yeah, <laughs> it's, a lot, it's a lot of episodes, man. Um but yeah, 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 I'm enjoying it. I, I think it's fun. Let me know what you're thinking of the show. But uh, yeah, as somebody who loves that 70s show, I'm having a pretty good time with the show. You know, I got I got comfortable with it. I'm getting used, got used to it now. And now I'm just having a good time watching watching the show build and get to where it's going. And like I said, I hope there's more uh, seasons for the show to happen. Because, you know, I guess Netflix, you know, it's really weird for Netflix to, you know, with shows, <laughs> you know, it's, it's a weird thing, but, you know, they're, they're doing what they need to do, but yeah, man, I'm enjoying it, hope you're enjoying it as well, give it a, give it a fair time, give it some time, you know, give it a fair shake, like I said, you're probably used to that 70s show, give it, give it a fair shake, you'll get through it, and you'll, I think you'll enjoy it, man, it, it, it definitely gets good, but I'm enjoying it, here's to hoping they get a season two, can't wait to see the rest of the season, I'll talk to you more about it uh, next episode, let's go ahead and jump into the news, shall we, starting it off with DC, I think the last two episodes I started off with horror news, so why don't we get, dive into the DC news here first off, and of course, most of the DC stuff surrounds James Gunn as we're waiting to see his slate for the DCU and seeing what the DCU is in the future as we go forward. Uh, of course, we do have a couple of movies we've got to get through before we get to that uh, with this year. But nonetheless, we got stuff to talk about here. So James Gunn responded to a tweet like he's been doing and more power to him. I'm glad he is responding to these things. Uh, he responded to a tweet asking him not to cast the Guardians of the Galaxy actors in the DCU but instead to find new actors. Now that comes off of um, James Gunn recently was speaking with Empire Magazine and he said, quote, the cast, he was talking about Guardians of the Galaxy, of course, um, quote, the cast are like my family. I cannot tell you how close I am to Chris, Palm, Dave, Zoe, and Karen, but I also know I will work again with all these people individually again, probably at my other job, end quote. Of course, his other job being DC, which I think I brought up a, a little while um, couple episodes ago on my show i'm like he's gonna bring some of these people over to dc for sure and i'm here for it um and dave batista i know has been wanting to play bane for a while so maybe james gunn will make that happen we'll see but uh this this tweet was in response to his empire magazine quote here and james gunn responded to said tweet by saying we have hundreds of roles to cast as i've always done some will be brand new faces some will be actors i've worked with before and some will be actors you know who i've never worked with 
What matters most is the actor fits the role and they're easy to work with, end quote. Perfect, right? I mean, you want to work with actors that fit the role, obviously, and they want to be easy to work with. So, you know, I I mean, the main thing I took out there, hundreds of roles to cast, man. This guy is working on something big over here. Uh, Let's see. Another question was posed on the Twitter asking if some of the slate would still be revealed this month, as has been previously talked about, to which James Gunn did, in fact, say yes. So, again, patience. Patience. I know we're late in the January, but just give us some patience. We'll be there before long. Uh, but that's not the only stuff going on in the DC world. Jason Momoa has been talking. Jason Momoa, of course, is Aquaman, and we'll have an Aquaman movie. I guess, coming out this year. Um, but uh, he was uh, talkative, and he said, quote, I'll always be Aquaman. Uh, that was what he proclaimed at a recent event. Uh, and he also recently met with DC studio heads James Gunn and Peter Safran to talk about his future in the DC universe, uh, saying, quote, It's very, very wonderful. I'm in the house of Warner Brothers, and they are liking a lot of stuff I'm doing. we got a lot of good things coming. Moe also asked about the Lobo rumors and he did not confirm such rumors but he did have this to say quote there might be other characters uh end quote uh coming from him down the line regarding dc uh quote the beautiful thing about aquaman the lost kingdom is me and my partner wrote the first treatment for it and it's about a 55 page treatment and all of it has to deal with me talking to the un about what's happening with the melting ice caps there's there's no far off galaxy coming to destroy us or aliens from another place it's us ruining our planet we need to get it together and save our homes i'll always be aquaman ain't anyone coming in there and taking shit uh there might be some other characters too i can play other things too i can be funny and savage and charming end quote uh so let's dissect this a little bit here i'll always be aquaman does not sound to me i know like a lot of people it sounds like oh he's gonna keep playing aquaman he could very well could i mean again dc has this you know universe where they can have several different things going on at one time it's okay you know some people may not comprehend it may be hard to process in some brains but it's okay you can have that happen um so if he does continue to play aquaman so be it uh if he is lobo instead of aquaman so be it that is fun if he's playing some other character whatsoever as well as aquaman so be it (laughs) you know we'll see how it all ends up going here um this Aquaman movie he's talking about sounds interesting. You know, uh, sounds like they're trying to preserve the waters as opposed to it being like a battle or anything like that. So we'll see. When I say we'll see, y'all will see. I'm not watching that movie for obvious reasons as I continue to boycott anything to do with that movie. Uh, <laughs> And, I, you know, I feel bad. I do like Jason Momoa. I feel like he's kind of kind of been lumped into my uh, unliking of said person that I will not bring up being in that movie. But, you know, I'm glad things are going to work out there. He's a charismatic person. And, you know, I, he's done a great job with the Aquaman role. You know, and if he continues to play the character cool, he's playing another character cool. But either way, it sounds like he's still on for... DC in the future, and it, it kind of seems like that way altogether. I mean, we haven't heard from Gal, but you know, James Gunn remember never said that he fired, uh, never fired Gal. You know, he he uh, you know he came out and said I don't know where people are getting this narrative that Gal was fired. So Gal, as far as we know, is still our Wonder Woman. Uh, ben Affleck seems to be going the directing route. We'll see what happens. Uh, Ben's supposed to be still playing Batman in the upcoming Flash film. Um, uh, Superman's the only character that is changing. Um, you know, we, they're going with a younger Superman, which again is fine. Uh, and they have something planned. They want to work with Henry Cavill in the future. So, cool, you know. I mean, if you want to get really wild, freaking bring Henry Cavill back as Bizarro. <laughs> Look it up, people. Look it up. Uh, that could be that could be interesting, at least. But, yeah, cool, you know. We just gotta wait. We gotta wait to see what they're gonna do with the DCU. You know, I'm patiently waiting to see everything. There will be, I think, the Flash will be definitely a part of the unfolding. You know, of course, we got Shazam coming. Shazam, Shaz, Shazam. Why did that feel weird? I don't know. We have Shazam coming up. We have Blue Beetle. We got the Flash, and we've got Aquaman this year. Um, well, you have to wait to see how everything shapes up. I mean, if Jason Momoa is still playing Aquaman, that makes it a little bit easier to understand. 
that that Aquaman movie is still releasing after the Flash film, which is supposed to reset everything in the DC. Who knows? You know, who knows? But we'll see how things go in the future, and we'll just have to wait. And of course, I'll have that news for you when we get there. Uh, let's note the last thing here for Jason Momoa in DC. This is the last thing right here now. Uh, Jason Momoa also talked about Batman, saying, "Quote: I shot with a couple different Batmans." But you just don't know what's going on, and we'll see what the end product is. End quote. A shot with a couple different Batmans. So now we do know that the Flash film is supposed to have Michael Keaton's Batman and Ben Affleck's Batman. And, you know, we do have a trailer coming during the, the Super Bowl. So we'll, we'll get some more information there. Flash is also wearing a Batman-esque suit. So, is that the other Batman he's talking about? Is Christian Bale's Batman in this? Ooh. Let's just tease people. Better not be George Clooney's Batman, but at the same time, that could be hilarious. Any, nonetheless. <laughs> you know, we'll see what happens when that gets here, but you know, that's fun that he said he shot with a couple different Batmans. Alright, let's jump into the horror talk. First thing leading off here. Uh, the Scream 6 trailer did drop since the last time we talked. Uh, you can check that out um, everywhere. But you can check out Zach's reaction to the trailer on the Throwing Podcast Network's YouTube, as well as him and Mr. Wonderful talking about that trailer and the film itself on the latest episode of Slasher Report. Um, tune in there. We got a lot of fun stuff going on on the Throwing Podcast Network's YouTube uh, between trailer reactions, the Slasher Report show. Um, there's some video gameplay on there. I really need to get back doing to that. Um, it just, you know, all together fun stuff. You can find all of our shows on there as well. Like I mentioned before, the Metal Group podcast with Tombstone Josh. This show, um, Mr. Wonderful Show, which is, you know, doing best of right now as he's coming with a new show. Um, Core Memory Unlocked. I guess this is growing up. All kinds of fun stuff going on on the Throwing Podcast Network YouTube, man. Be sure to follow that to get all of our shows. That's the only place I think you can find all of our shows in one collective, you know, grouping of just awesomeness. All right there. Um, but yeah, they, they talked all that stuff on the Slash Report. I'm not going to go too much into the Scream 6 trailer. Uh, just give my quick thoughts here. It looks cool. Um, I am a little hesitant with the Scream franchise. There's only two films I've really enjoyed from the franchise. Um, other one that I was like, okay with. Uh, the most recent film I was like, meh, on. And then, of course, everybody hates three. Um, <laughs> just about everybody hates three. But, I don't know. It, it's left this taste in my mouth where I'm like, I gotta see the movie. I can't get overly excited about it. Uh, there is a scene in the trailer with Ghostface having a gun, which, you know, is throwing a lot of people off. Um, to me... It doesn't throw me off so much as much as I think that scene is like a nightmare. I don't think that's part of the chase. I could very well be wrong, but that just plays out like a, a nightmare scene to me. <laughs> or this movie's getting really crazy because Ghostface is just killing people bold face out in, out in the world. Yeah, out in New York. You know, he's just killing people in, you know, broad nighttime. But, you know, I, I don't know. It feels like a nightmare scene to me. Let me know what you think about that. But it really feels like one of the sisters is probably having a nightmare. Um, and that's what they're they're envisioning. Let's see. Also, the same with the train. Maybe something like that's going on with the train as well. Anything's possible. Anything's possible. I could very well be wrong. But one of those two scenes, I think, is a nightmare scene. Um, leaning more towards the, the, the convenience store scene. Um, but yeah, Stream 6 stuff's there again. If you want to see Zach's reaction to the trailer and you want to hear him and Mr. Wonderful give their thoughts on the film, go ahead and check it out. Uh, they definitely talk about the stew of it all, <laughs> for sure. Kind of in the same vein of the stew of it all. Uh, recently, speaking with Dread Central, Emma Roberts uh, was asked about uh, which horror franchise she'd most like to join. And her response was, I don't know, maybe I'd go back to Scream. I feel like I wasn't done with Scream, end quote. Um, <laughs> listen, I'm for it. <laughs> I love me some Emma Roberts. thought she was fantastic in Scream 4. Honestly, probably one of the best ghost faces. The smartest ghost face for sure, because she almost got away with it. Yeah, I haven't watched Scream 4 in a while, but I, I do like that movie. Hayden Pantieri's back, so is Emma Roberts in this movie? Ooh, interesting. We'll have to wait and see what happens there. But I thought that was fun uh, that Emma Roberts was asked that question. Emma Roberts is Emma Roberts sneakily a scream queen, and not just because she's been on a show called Scream Queen. She's done a lot of stuff around horror. Um, so 
we'll have to wait and see if she's part of it as well. Uh, let's see. Speaking with Variety recently, Amber Midthunder was asked about a potential sequel to Prey, uh, saying, quote, I don't have a date for you. That is not an announcement, but I'm not saying it's not happening. We'll talk all we talk all the time about all kinds of things, and the Prey sequel was probably one. Um, of course, I'm ready. I loved that experience. I loved that movie, and I would be happy to see what else we can take it. Where else we can take it? End quote. Uh, yeah, give me a Prey too. I don't know what we're waiting on. Let's go ahead and you know, freaking fast track that. You know <laughs> that Prey was such a good movie. It was one of my favorite films of last year, and it's just oh my god, it's so good. So yeah, I mean, I, I it's only a matter of time. Before they announce a Prey 2, as far as I'm concerned. And that one will probably go to theaters. If I was a betting man. Which I'm not. But seems like that would go to theaters. Uh, let's see. A Friday the 13th reboot may be in the works. You know, I did read that quote where... Um, you know, and I'm sure the Slash Report will cover this for you as well. Uh, so again, be sure to tune into that show every Friday on the Throwing Podcast Network's YouTube. But... And again, I, I would rather wonderful and... Zach give their expertise here because they are the bigger Friday the 13th fans than I am. But uh, Sean S. Cunningham and rumors have begun that uh, he is making a Friday the 13th reboot film. Now, of course, we do have the the show on the way for the Peacock. Um, Crystal Lake, I believe it's called. And, you know, now it seems like a movie could be in the works. Now, if you read the articles and all this stuff, I don't doesn't sound like a movie is in the works from what I read. It just sounds like it was something that was pitched um, to Sean S. Cunningham for people who are working on another film with Sean S. Cunningham right now. But we'll see how things go down the line. Um, I mean, again, positives for the Friday the 13th fans, it seems. You know, you got the show already announced to be coming that has no restrictions to it and apparently another movie on the way, so. About time, man. Let's just get things going with the Nightmare on Elm Street now. And let's see. Megan 2.0. This was also talked about on the Slasher Report. I don't know, man. Slasher Report's taking my news. I don't know what to, I don't know what to do. They, you know, I'm not I'm not on the Slasher Report every week. They're randomly, which is fine. I get it. But also, at the same time, we're talking the same stuff. But all of us have all different opinions and viewpoints, so that's why it works. Okay? Uh, but yeah, Megan 2.0 was announced. Nobody should be surprised at this by any means. That movie is kicking ass right now. Uh, so, of course, Talk Monster and Blumhouse will be working on a sequel to the thriller film. Uh, Universal has scheduled the movie to debut in 2025, January 17th, 2025, to be precise, which is a good move. Do not rush it. Take your time with it. Um, uh, Allison Williams and Violet McGraw will be returning to the franchise, which is good. Um, if you've seen Megan, hopefully you enjoyed it. You heard my review. I absolutely enjoyed that movie, so can't wait for more. Um, yeah, I mean, what a what a juggernaut that movie has been. And I don't know what they're gonna do sequel wise. It it could it should be good either way. I mean, Megan's pretty much freaking Ultron now. <laughs> um, so it, it, there's, it's just <laughs> it just came up there at the top of my head. <laughs> Now I want to see Megan versus Ultron. What a movie that would be. Uh, all right. Uh, this happened right before recording. Violet Night 2 is officially in the works. Uh, that is the the uh, Christmas movie starring David Harbour, uh, who is a violent Santa Claus. I haven't seen the movie yet. I know it's on Peacock. I've heard good things. My friends have been talking about it. They've enjoyed it. I need to watch it. It is on the docket to watch for sure, but we'll see if I get to it. I got that Patreon show to do for you. I got some other stuff in the works to do for you for also on the Patreon, man. Look out for that Patreon, dude. There's a lot of fun stuff going on over there. Be worth it'd be worth the buckage. Don't worry. All right, is that it for the horror news? Yep, that's it for the horror thriller news. So it's going to go into the other bits of news before we drop off for this episode. Uh, first thing to talk about going from sequels to another possible, maybe sequel. Um, Obi-Wan Kenobi, Season 2. Ian McGregor said, quote, I was happy to do it again. I'm so happy to work with Hayden again. I hope we get the chance to do it again. End quote. Again, like I mentioned with Prey, what are we waiting on? Do it. Absolutely do it. Freaking Obi-Wan is a fantastic show in my eyes. I absolutely love that show. I freaking binge watch that show. And I don't even know the last time I binge watched a show. And you know what you're saying. You're like, ah, episodes released weekly. I know they do. I wait a couple weeks to watch it because of that reason. Um, because I wanted to watch a bunch of shows back to back to back. I didn't want to wait, man. But I did end up waiting, not wanting to wait. And anyways, you know, I wanted to watch the prequels before watching the show. So I got some time to build up there. 
I absolutely love that show. Yes, give me more. Give me more of that for sure. Uh, let's see. A hey, while we're off talking Disney stuff, this is. Uh, anyways, uh, third Tron movie is back in the headline news out there. Still has Jared Leto attached to star, and Maleficent, Mistress of Evil director Joaquin Roning is in talks to helm the film. Um, the film was originally titled Tron Ares. Uh, the film would follow the, of course, Tron film that released in 1982, as well as the 2010 sequel Tron Legacy. I know my brother digs that movie. Uh, Jared Leto has, of course, been attached to this third Tron movie since, what, 2017? Uh, yeah, 2017. And that was where it was first announced that he would star and produce the film and, you know, has been attached ever since, you know. Tron franchise has been up and down for a while over there at Disney, but uh, here we go again around the bend for a third Tron film. Maybe happening. As you can see, 1982 was the first film that he had the, the sequel in 2010, and then, you know, it's now what, 2022. So I haven't got the movie, uh, but apparently they're working on it now. They have The Ride, which seems to be opening in April this year at Walt Disney World. This was already open in uh, Shanghai's Disneyland. Was already there, and they of course were bringing to the Walt Disney World and have been working on that for a long time. Uh, it is seems like it is officially opening in April. Um, we'll see again. Patreon talk wise, I have a, have a theme park show that I'm working on as well that I should be hitting the Patreon at some point in time. Uh, again, a lot of stuff going on. That's just from me. Don't forget, Zach and Wonderful have stuff hitting that you know Patreon as well. Um, so yeah, we got stuff go stuff going on over there. Stuff is cooking over there, man. Join in, have fun. Uh, but there you go. That's the Tron talk. Let's see. Antoine Fuqua is set to direct Michael, which is a Lionsgate drama telling the life story of the iconic king of pop himself, Michael Jackson. Uh, it is moving pretty fast as well. Fuqua is currently finishing The Equalizer 3 with Denzel Washington. And then he'll be turning his attention on to this film. I mean, music biography, semi-biography movies have been like a big deal recently. Um, of course, they've done them in the past, but it just seems like over the last couple of years, they've been really kicking these things out with uh, Bohemian Rhapsody, which I wasn't the biggest fan of. Um, uh, the Elton John movie. What the hell, what the hell was the movie called? Freaking Rocket Man, duh. <laughs> it was called Rocket Man, which I did enjoy. Um, uh, Elvis, which I absolutely love. I absolutely love that Elvis movie. It's my favorite movie of last year. Um, I know the Whitney Houston movie recently came out. I've not heard too much about that movie, actually. Uh, and then here we go. We have the Michael Jackson movie coming, which I am very interested in because I am a big Michael Jackson fan. I love the king, king, the king of pop. I am a Michael Jackson guy. So I'm excited to see where this ends up going, man. Best of luck to him. Hopefully they do a good job with it and, you know, could be an Oscar contender in the in the future, because again, those movies, Bohemian Rhapsody and Elvis have done pretty well during award season, and we'll see how uh, Elvis ends up faring during the Oscars. Uh, we do know Austin won a, um, he's won a couple awards for his performance. He is up against Brendan Fraser's performance for the Will, which is going to be a tough task to uh, beat as well. Everything, everything, everywhere, all at once has been getting a lot of awards as well, so tough task this year, but Anything can happen in the uh, awards realm. But yeah, Michael Jackson movie. It was only a matter of time and good on him. Now I'm just waiting for that Ozzy Osbourne movie that has been announced. And um, they eventually got to make an Eddie Van Halen movie, right? Got to. All right, let's see. And last bit of news here. Fitting because I ended last week's show with uh, news around this as well. Uh, WWE 2K3. 2K23 has officially been announced. Uh, they've been dropping stuff all day today as the uh, cover covers, three different covers, all with John Cena as the cover star. You've got the uh, the regular edition, the deluxe edition, and the icon edition. Uh, it will feature several franchise advancements, including a unique take on the 2K showcase, the WWE 2K introduction of the fan favorite war games, and expansion to several marquee game modes. In addition, fans will also get to look forward to a deeper roster of WWE superstars and legends, including the Tribal Chief, Roman Reigns, the American Nightmare, Cody Rhodes, Ronda Rousey, Brock Lesnar, Stone Cold Steve Austin, and more. One of those and more, because I saw the showcase video earlier, is Rob Van Dam. And that's because the showcase will be, of course, featured, I don't think anybody is shocked by this, uh, John Cena. 
<laughs> so the showcase is John Cena. But like I mentioned earlier, it is a unique twist on the showcase this year. Um, conquering John Cena in the ring is an accolade for a few superstars can claim. In an unprecedented twist on the 2K showcase, players will step into the boots of several of Cena's toughest competitors with one goal in mind, defeat the man who will never give up. Spanning his 20-year WWE career narrated by Cena himself, this interactive sports entertainment documentary uses 2K's unique slingshot tech for a seamless transition from gameplay to live-action footage to bring pivotal moments in each match to life. Uh, showcase mode has always been awesome. It's one of the best moments of the WWE 2K games. And this should be fun. You get to play as his competitors. I wonder how hard it's going to be. Because there was one... Oh, God, I can't remember what game it was. But there was one beat the streak. Where you literally had to go against the Undertaker. It was the hardest freaking thing ever. Like, God, that was ridiculously hard. Um, so I wonder how hard this is going to be. Um, now we do know how all the matches turn out. If you're a huge WWE fan, you know the history of some of these matches, like that Rob Van Dam match and everything. Um, but yeah, I can't wait to experience this. I love the WWE video games. I have a good time playing them. You've seen me do some gameplays. It's been quite a while, but you've seen me do some gameplays on 3 Podcast Network YouTube. I will get back to that, I promise. But, there you go. The new game is officially announced. We'll get more stuff as the time goes, but it is officially announced and will be releasing March 17th, 2023. If you pre-order the two bigger editions, um, you can get the game three days early, which is what I'll be doing when I pre-order Hogwarts Legacy. Because that game is almost here, man. Can't wait to play that. And I'll talk about it on the show as well because I'm excited for that one. Uh, but yeah, pre-order it. Get some fun stuff and get to play it three days early. I mean, who can complain? But that's going to do it for the show, man. Um, didn't even talk about it. New entrance theme, man. Recorded that uh, just the other night. It was me on the ukulele. Uh, strumming and singing. Uh, we had my brother hitting the cowbell, and we had my youngest niece hitting the clap. So, it was so awesome. I had a good time doing that, and, you know, just fun, man. Just a fun way, I think, to kick off the show. Bright, fun way. It kind of should get you an idea that you're getting into a fun time here. My show is not perfect, and I don't want it to be perfect, uh, which is perfect to me. <laughs> so, there you go. Um, but I hope I hope you enjoyed the show. And all the talk here again, that 90 show. I'm enjoying it. I have my full final thoughts after I finish the show. Uh, that should be by next week. Um, and then enjoy the DC talk and horror talk and other news here. Again, I will be back next week with the mandatory DC and horror talk and uh, that 70 show review and anything else I can come up with, man. Because having a good time, Royal Rumble talk. We'll have Royal Rumble talk as well. And again, Royal Rumble game. We are playing it on the Throwing Podcast Network's YouTube, man. Be sure to hit that like and subscribe and notification bell on our YouTube page so you'll be ready for that when it happens. And if you want to play along, man, Throw Me Podcast Network's Patreon. One dollar. One dollar. You can play along with us. So, yes, fun times. But <laughs> as always, thank you for joining the show. Hope you all have a great rest of the day, week, year, month. And remember that happiness can always be found, even in the darkest of times, if one remembers to turn on the light. Talk to you all next episode.